Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Welcome to day two of Lime Made 3.0, presented by Lime City, benefiting underwater smoking. Fellow community member, I'm your host, Solid Tony. And today we got some great, great runs for, um, for the last and final day. And uh, the first run is Metal Gear Solid 3. Snake Eater HD Collection European Extreme by Raichu MGS and and we also before we begin the run we just wanted to read a donation from a Prothero 68 with $50 his comment saying thank you appreciate that donation And um, don't think we have anything else. Just wanted to remind everyone before uh, we continue that any subs, bits, donations will go toward benefiting underwater smoking. So with that being said, um, I'm going to take it to Apache Smash and Young Snow for our commentaries. So take it away, boys. Thank you, Tony. Really great introduction. Uh, glad to be here. Uh, great to be here. Good morning, everybody. Good afternoon. Good evening. Uh, we're here with Raichu MGS. He's going to do some Metal Gear Solid 3 European Extreme HD Edition. And he's on PS3. Um, yeah, I'm excited for the run. Um, glad to see Raichu doing this again. Um, and we have the blue background, so we have extra good luck. Hell yeah. It's been, a, it's been some time since we've seen Raichu do a, a live performance of MGS3. I know he's been streaming it a little bit. Um, but I'm I'm excited to see him play. Uh, Raichu has famously had a uh, very like multi-segment kind of style of play. He goes for very dangerous stuff all the time. So he's he's always been an exciting After player to watch. World War II, yeah, he, and he was warning us in advance. He might go for the risky Raichov. So we'll see what this happens. The beginning of the era um, the Cold War. Yeah, I mean, and at one point, uh, just to kind of discuss it right away, I'm pretty sure at one point Raichu did hold the record for this category, correct? Yeah, Raichu held European Extreme World Record. Um, so from 2016 to 2020, Hikari held it for four years. I beat it after four years, and within 24 hours, Raichu beat me. So, <laughs> nice. Yeah, he, he has held, held record in this category, which was his goal for a long time. Starting out with the new um, tactic developed by Strafe. So Strafe realized that it's actually faster to go around. This is something I, I always like wondered if it'd be faster, but I just thought people have been running the game so long and crawling underneath. It, there's like there's no way, right? And then Strafe, uh, Stra Stra I keep saying Strafe, not Strafe. MGS Slade recently posted a video on his YouTube where he timed going under and going around, and to him it looks faster. And and Raichu obviously believes it's faster as well. So we don't normally see people go in that direction. Yeah, that is the first time I've even seen that. So I, I got to catch up on my MGS3 strats, it seems. Yeah, um, which, as I say, you know, very unique player is going to do different strats. Already in the first room, he's doing something different. So that's that's really awesome to see. And just kind of getting back to that world record stuff, I, I wanted to say in that time period, it kind of was going back and forth, right? The world record was kind of interchanging between, like, you, Hikari, Major Zero, Raichu. Like, you guys all kind of... We're passing it around at one point. Yeah, I believe off the top of my head, it went me, Raichu, Hikari. No, re me, Raichu, me, Major, Hikari, Major. Some Something like that. <laughs> like, everyone got the record in that year, and a few people got it twice. Like, it was crazy. Yeah. It was like nothing, nothing, nothing for years, and then just world record changing hands, like, multiple times within 2020. Really, really cool time for the game. So first room with enemies here, and Raichu's going to get some headshots off. Uh, for the next guy coming up, he's going to do a quick shot and then roll into him. If you shoot a guard and then roll into him, you'll knock him out instantly. Yeah, it's a tactic we use all over the board. In European Extreme, it can take like five or six tranks to the chest to put them down. So uh, that, that rolling strat is just super, super fast. Yeah, and keep an eye on uh, Snake's hitbox anytime like Raichu rolls through a guard. It's, it's enormous. Um, you'll see, like, you, you can kind of be, like, an inch away, inch or two away from the guard, and you'll still hit him with, like, you know, the air in between. It's weird. So right there, what, what you could do right here on this bridge is you can hold your gun out, and, and Snake will auto-aim, and then all you got to do is go into first person, 
Get on your tiptoes and you should get some headshots off. That trick right there where you shoot the dirt and then just run ahead, that guard will never see you as long as you do that exact movement. Or I yeah, shouldn't say went, never. When, <laughs> when never guards know. go into the radio, they can't actually hear footsteps. Normally guards can hear you if you're running behind them. But just when they're doing anything else, they no longer hear footsteps, which is useful. I wonder what he's going to do with this room because he has typically done weird fast strats. Uh, two shots on the guard as he's walking down the stairs. He'll fall asleep before we get to him. Uh, and then you, we typically roll into this guard here, but I, I never know with Raichu what he's going to do because there's a strat where you can shoot the wall. There's all kinds of different things you can do in this room, but he does a very a very standard um, room before Sokolov. Very, very clean virtuous mission. Yeah, definitely. Without a doubt. I've seen that wall shot strat and that looks very precise. I applaud anyone who can do that. Yeah, you see Jag doing it a lot. Jag tends for, to go for that wall, wall shot. Mm -hmm. with, with Metal Gear Solid 3, I always say this. like, If you look at all the runners of this game, everyone has their own unique style and flavors that they that they play with. You can generally tell who's playing, even if you don't see the name up, if you've, if you've studied the game for a while. Yeah, definitely. I think that's what makes it so enjoyable whenever you see an MGS3 runner in a marathon run and in races as well, when you get to see like two opposing styles playing against each other there's strengths and weaknesses to to how to how you play uh with right use i'd say it's very like high risk high reward mm -hmm. and kind of speaking to that the game's also kind of flexible in a way with its boss fights too you'll see you know the fear the the two rope spots or even that trap spot you can go to i think or whatever uh you know the pain you can kind of depending you can waste more grenades or smokes i don't know i just feel like the game's a bit flexible uh, more so than one and two or even four but yeah yeah i, I feel like um the other metal gear game i'm not going to name any names but other metal gear <laughs> games become extremely linear everyone kind of plays the same it's like this is the strategy for this room this is the strategy for this room whereas mgs3 there's multiple ways to do different things yeah. and uh, you know it's like that the, you can go insanely fast with certain things but then you 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 are extreme risk of, of taking a continue so beginning of Snake Eater, Operation Snake Eater, we have probably one of the scariest rooms coming up. Um, but don't let Raichu hear that. But uh, no, this room coming up, you don't have any guns, don't have any tranks. All you have is some stuns, a D-mic, and a knife, if I'm correct, if I believe. And uh, yeah, it's a pretty cool strat coming up, but it is it is highly dangerous. Yeah, these Sorry. next two rooms with guards are just like you, you require perfect movement to get through without continue. So as we start out in this first room, there's two guards that are walking towards us and we have to go in front of them in order to progress to the next section. We can't take them out. We don't have any guns, as Snow said. We're going to have to roll perfectly over the tree. And this makes the two guards in front. One will look at you and one will turn and face the other guard. And if we hug this wall perfectly, we can get behind this third guard by cooking a stun grenade, which silences our footsteps. But that's like the movement is so precise. One step in the wrong direction. If you get bunked on a wall, something like that, you are getting seen in that room. So that was absolutely perfect. Hey, guys, mind if I uh, jump in for a quick donation? Sure, Tony. All right. So we have $20 from Theory. Comments, big spam, lads. Good luck to everyone. Made it back in time to catch the last day. Live at least. It's uh, nice to hear a familiar face. Uh, good to see you, Theory. Thanks for that donation. This, this, this is what I'm talking about. Your movement here has to be perfect. You have to roll off this ledge and then roll behind through the trees. You can't walk like that. And sometimes after you roll and stand up and start moving, you hit to roll again. But it's like you get like a dead input. Um, so, you know, I know I know the feeling of getting caught in this room. Yeah, the lines for this room and the last one are absolutely crucial. Uh, even and that looked smooth right there, but he still I, got caught. I don't, I don't know why he got caught there. Yeah. Like I was, I was convinced yeah. that that looked fine. Oh man, I know this feel. I know the feel of being stuck on this room. Looks like he. This is, is like, it. This is the. This is the one, boys. I believe. Yeah, so you've got to roll off the ledge, and then you've got to roll again to get behind the tree. You've got to wait for Snake to stand fully up before you do an input. There we go. There we and go. then you're free. Nice. You're free. He's going to be feeling good about that. Like, <laughs> that room is hell. Like, Snow, you know yourself. That There's a rough yeah. room for movement. 
Uh, but I will say he now has the whole Foxhound thing off his mind. He can now play to his heart's content. You know, he's now free to, to really get as risky as he'd like without worrying about getting that rank one. It, it does, like, it, it is a sense of relief because you are playing super tense. Like, in yeah. marathon runs, when you want to get a Foxhound, um, you will, like, hunch up and you'll grip the controller <laughs> really tightly. And then as soon as you get a continue, like, oh, okay, pressure's off. I can right. just do my thing. We are coming up to the, the Ocelot boss fight, uh, the Ocelot unit boss fight, even. We're going to get the box first. Um, super tough. On the tier list of, like, boss fights in this game, I'd say this is, like, you know, top three. This is this is the equivalent of those last two rooms. You have to be perfect. You nearly have to be perfect to get through this boss fight without getting caught, obviously. Yeah, for, because... fortunately, uh, the game does give us some weapons now, so that's <laughs> yeah, a bit of a yeah. bonus. But yeah, these these guards are regular guards. If they see you, it's an alert, and the game's over. So these aren't like boss fight guards that have special rules. So this first one, we get him in the chest. As long as you don't hit him in the head, it's fine. Get the guard out the window, typically in the head, but a body shot is fine too. You want to get this guard as it goes from left to right, and then roll over the box and throw a stun grenade through the door. What we'll do is we'll knock on the wall as well to give ourselves a little bit more time. Now we hide in this doorway and lean for the roof guard. As long as you lean for a doorway, the guard won't be able to see you. And now it's just cleaning up the room. Long range shot on this guard. Quick headshot on this guard to the left. And there's one more. You can get a running shot on him if you're crazy, but Rash <laughs> takes it a little bit safer with the stand-in shot. He also takes the silencer off of his Mark 22 because he's going to want that silencer removed for when he gets to Ocelot. So he just does that right. menu now. Uh, and also, just to speak to the menu at the beginning of the fight, he unequipped his knife, I think it was. Uh, you could also get rid of the D mic and then equip the box at that time. There we go. That's where the box equip is and the bug juice equip. Yeah, this is something like Major Zero timed out. I always felt like equipping the box before Ocelot unit was faster. Um, Major Zero timed it, and you know he, he said it's faster as well. It feels faster to me, but previously to that... Uh, runners would pick up the bug juice in order to get rid of the leech in the lake here and that's what you see Raichu doing here he's going to move further out so he gets a dive unfortunately cancel the dive when you dive into the water in this game if you th there's a certain amount of inertia that you get and if you don't press anything it'll kind of like snake carry snake along but if you swim it will cancel it right and picks up the grenade here grenade's super important for the pain this is like the only place we can really get it. You can pick them up during the Ocelot fight as well, but we typically don't move during that fight. Gonna roll into an Eva call here. Just uh, thankfully with MGS3, we could just hold triangle and skip codex. <laughs> well, Shia Pass South, a really interesting room coming up. Um, I'm gonna say the word precise a lot for these rooms. You have to be precise. Apache, it sounded like you wanted to say something. Yeah, I, I'm just going to go off what you were saying. Like, it's super precise, even including, like, holding the direction you need to be walking as the room starts. Otherwise, yep. the room doesn't quite work correctly. Right, just doing a weird strat here. He shot super early. Did you see right. that? Yeah, I did, yeah. This is, um, I believe this is a, a way of doing Polshire past base where, or, or past self, where you don't ever stop moving. So in the strat that we normally do, we'll push the box against the electric fence. But he looks like he's going to do a weird strat here. He is. He is. Stops moving for just a second. But like this is so dangerous. Because look how close he was to that guard. You can <laughs> see the guard on the camera. Right. This is not typically done. This is, I'd say, quite a bit faster than the normal strat. Maybe two, three seconds. That was clean. Yeah, that early shot was interesting. Definitely has something to do with it, you think? Yeah, he shot super early compared to where, where you would normally shoot. Um, here is a cool strat. He's going to shoot the guard which with a, a lethal gun, which makes him run onto his radio, and he's just going to run past him. You, you have to shoot him at the exact right place, otherwise he'll turn too early or turn too late. Um, so, really decently done. Here comes the Ocelot boss fight. Uh, some Mark 22 shots, some stun grenades. You have to time this second stun grenade carefully, I believe. Don't want to fight. Don't want to throw it too early unless this won't. Otherwise, this won't work. But he turned yeah, well. Sure. Oh. Go ahead. You want our slot to be turned around when that second shot comes out. Otherwise, he'll just turn back. 
start shooting you. Oh, he dodged the shot. If you go to the right here and look over the rock, you can actually see Ocelot when he goes there. One important headshot, one body shot, body shot, and he's got it. Yep. And important to note, uh, right, you shot that uh, animal in the background. That's just to distract Ocelot. Clean fight. No complaints from me there. Yeah. Pain coming up. A uh, very exciting fight. It's all about landing your headshots. Um, body shots will do, what, maybe like a quarter of regular damage? <laughs> yeah, it's something like five times the damage for a headshot. They're, yeah. they're absolutely required. And and the weird thing about this fight is last thing I read or heard was the, the pain's hitbox where his head is like different on like each version of the game. So it's, it's not that it's different on each version of the game. It's just it's not his entire head. It's like a small triangle from his neck to his nose. Uh -huh, so okay. so like if you if you shoot at the top of the head, the bullet just goes through his head and hits the back wall. You can literally hear it hit the back wall. So that's why um, you kind of want to aim more for his chin area then. Yeah, there's like a little crevice where like um, his clothes touches touches like the bottom of his chin <laughs> that I was uh -huh. aim for. But in the meantime, just some downtime going through this cave. Uh, he will pick up some ammo, uh, I think smoke grenades and probably some ammo coming up ahead. Yeah, there's some M1911 ammo, which you don't particularly need, but it's just kind of in the way, so you tend to pick it mm. up anyway. Um, I think the Mark 22 was on the left then. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, he, he already picked up two boxes of Mark 22 in the other room. He All is right. in the 3D camera here. I wonder if he's going to do the camera buffer where you hold right stick and the menu at the same time. No, he's not. He's not even in the 3D camera. Whoa, that was crazy <laughs> movement. You see that? To throw the smoke yeah. grenade. He did, uh, that was awesome. I don't really see anyone do that movement. That's like so much better than going into first person view and trying to aim for it. Now, one thing yeah. I will mention, because he is on PS3, the lag here will be downright awful. Um, and it will affect his IGT, unfortunately. You can use the right stick while he's in this... Uh, OG camera, you can use the right stick to like tilt the camera down, save some frames, but that's that's some high level stuff in my opinion. Yeah, like reduction straps were extensively used in, in Major's World Record. Yeah. And if we shoot him enough times here, oh yes. If we shoot him enough times there, we can avoid an extra shield phase. It saves about nine seconds. So that's a really, really fast phase too. How do you think about that fight on Xbox compared to this Apache? I prefer it because there's no lag, but there's the quick reloading glitch. So like right. you tend to like not. I, I, recently, I've started like not quick reloading for that fight on Xbox, but on PS3, obviously, it's it's super safe to quick reload. Definitely, yeah. Not to mention the aiming on Xbox on the Xbox version. It's just it's just something about it's garbage. it. Garbage. <laughs> yeah, it's garbage. Yeah. It's so bad. Yep. Um, some more downtime here. Notice the the use of the box. He's using that to get up slopes uh, at a normal speed. Otherwise, uh, not the entire path, I'm pretty sure, but at some point, Snake will slow down because he hits those uh, very odd angles or whatever the game determines him to slow down. So the box yeah, here it's is kinda, great. It's kind of weird because in very easy, we don't have the box here and we have to like navigate which bits are slow to roll over. Generally, right. if you don't have a box to walk up a slope, you'll roll. And he did the out of bounds there. That, that can kill you. It's not faster and you can hit a death plane doing that. So that was all for swag. We appreciate it. <laughs> So going through here you kind of want to hug this wall here as long as it doesn't make too many erratic movements he should be fine coming through um and as long as he's not too high up either because notice his camo says 19 percent um that's pretty low obviously but you can even get even like lower i guess 18 whatever if like because you can kind of measure how high up a snake is if that makes sense you can make him go slightly higher which would make your camo worse so you want to be careful with your positioning here is all i'm trying to say and this light, okay, perfect. The light moved. Uh, depending on your on how fast you are through this room, um, that light can stay there. And as long as you hug the wall, for the most part, you should be okay. I don't think that light ever goes far back this way. We got a chance to deal some damage to the end here. At the start of the room, you'll do like a quick headshot on the guard that's up. Then you shoot the barrel and shoot the other barrel. That takes out all the guards in this room and does a little bit of damage to the end. And when we get to the end fight, a bit of his stamina will be gone which is like necessary for the for the quick one screen kill on him and those are very clean barrel shots as well what a quick room for Raichu 
if you're a little bit slow after the first barrel, the third guard can call in the radio, which will mean two two more guards appear from where he's entering the warehouse, and you have to shoot the other barrel to get rid of them, waste some time. Hmm. So warehouse interior, warehouse one, uh, both warehouse interiors in my mind, uh, aside from the first two rooms at the beginning of Operation Snake Eater, are some of like the hardest rooms as well. Um, but the strat at least is very cool. I love the strat. I can't even remember what was used before, if anything. Um, I can't remember. Was this always pretty much used this whole box strat or was it something different up until? The only other strat I know is where like you trank crawl the first guard you see QC the second guard and then you knock on the wall and then you run up mm. with the box and knock him down. I've seen Jag and I've seen some other people do that. Typically, if you can't do that warehouse one strat, if you have issues with it, you'll do uh, a backup strat, which is a little bit slower. But what Raichu did is the fastest way to do it. Yeah, it's awesome. You just roll through the guards, uh, use the box to get up the stairs quicker, um, and, and you should be good to go. He's going to come up on this first guard here, shoot him in the head. Um, you can get spotted by that dog if you're a little bit too close to it. Um, for dogs, it takes them to see you twice before like an actual ing before the alert sets off. They'll see you once, you'll hear the ring, but then if you stick around and they see you again, you hear the ring again, it's over. Yeah, um, interestingly, dogs have to have a guard for them to go into alert. So, like, when the dogs chase oh. you through the tunnel, they can never actually alert because there's no guard there. So, if you take out all the guards, the dogs can't alert to you. But we don't, we don't have time to do that. We've <laughs> got to go meet Granin. This is a cool strat. He's going to change the scientist uniform, and the guards will do the alert where they're going to take you to prison. But you just turn the box off and on, or you're too fast, and you don't even need to do that. Ignore <laughs> what I'm saying, because Raichu's just too fast. I always box it 100%. Uh, going through the lab here, we're in our scientist uh, outfit. We don't have to worry about the soldiers unless we like bump into them. Uh, but the scientists downstairs, we do kind of have to be careful around them. We'll see if he grabs the spray first uh, or if he saves that for when he leaves. Because that will kind of change the positioning of these scientists coming up. I, I feel like it's easier to get on the way out. But, but either way is fine. It's the same speed whether you do it one way or the other pretty much. But as you say, it just affects the patterns of the guards. It will bump into the scientist, and that will reset the amount of time before he alerts to us. This this same room leaving, um, this is also a very <laughs> just a very dangerous room here. We're gonna I think he's gonna do the box strat uh, where he just runs past everyone. Yeah, there's like an invisible line on the floor that you have to walk on the entire time, and if you come off that line, you get an alert. Um, but perfectly done there, clips the box at the right time to prevent the scientist from alerting to him and gets out of view of the guard before the guard alerts. Oh, he went for the old, uh, he went for the, the leap through the door. Um, <laughs> it's really tight to get through the door with a roll, but I don't know, so it's like a second. So now we're just leaving the lab, uh, no scientists on this floor once again. I knew he was going to go for it. He's going to try and do the out of bounds. He always goes right. for this. While this isn't faster, it isn't much slower, and it definitely looks cool. You have to get it quite quickly because there is a guard who's going to see you otherwise. Yeah, there we go. Oh my god, he and fell out of bounds. Yep. This is what can happen. This is the danger of going out of bounds, right? All around the level is a huge death plane, so it, you can only be on top of the vent. Uh, he's definitely going to go for that again, right? <laughs> <laughs> Never give up on the swag. The swag is most important. I'll so let him do it, and then I'll explain it. Okay. So he's now actually out, out of bounds. He's inside the wall, and he's just hitting the load zone on the opposite side of the door to get out. All of that, I don't believe... I'm pretty sure it's not faster. It's like the same speed if you do it perfectly. But it looks really cool, so it's got to be done. <laughs> so important to note, changing it to animals here. If you notice that thin bar uh, beneath... Uh, behind, uh, ben <laughs> Uh, below snake's life that's a stamina bar and it's halfway which means his aim in first person is going to be shaky so animals completely negates any shaky hands and the caution strat here is going to shoot a shot get beneath a little gap here and i believe he's going to fire two more shots into that guard on his way out yep yeah and that nice. guard will just fall asleep as we get past him equipping very nice the, equipping the stuns for the legendary fear fight coming up uh, do you know if he takes the north or east rope? 
I bet he does north just because he's old school. Like old yeah. school players do north. That's that's the separation <laughs> between the new and the old school, right? So there's actually two rope traps you can use to do this uh this fast fear kill. I I personally believe that the east rope rope, rope trap is just way more consistent, but you know, mm. Raichi does his thing, he does it his way. This is the way you'll see like Jack do it. It's the way you'll see uh Hikari do it. I've always liked how they use their body to uh, to set off the rope trap. Like they stand up into it. Right, right. But super, super clean. Yeah. Showing yeah. that north, north, north rope trap isn't dead yet. But east is definitely a lot more consistent, eh? In my opinion, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. From what I've tried as well, I've I felt east was more consistent. This is this is strange. He got rid of the the arrow arrow wound, so he cured the poison. And he got rid of the arrow wound. That will affect the position that the end spawns in. Uh, we prefer to leave it in and keep him prone because he's easier to headshot, but this works fine too. Um, if he find has a better time shooting him while he's kneeling, then that's fine. This is warehouse too. Distract a guard on the bottom, on the second floor with the box. Roll onto a guard on the ground floor, and then we want to box headshot this third guard. And now we just want to get past this last guard before exiting the door. You just roll through him, turn the box back on. Ooh. He nearly was late on the box turn on, but yeah. if he if he hadn't have put the box on there, he would have been seen. So super yeah. super clean. A little scary for us as the viewers, but clean. Uh, and yeah, for those that don't know, a box headshot. You equip the box. You kind of line it up. Uh, there's tape in the middle, which I kind of use for one of the boxes. There's like a piece of tape in the middle. You just line it up with the guy's head, unequip, and just pound that shoot button, and boom, lights out for him. Uh, we will probably see it again in Mountains 2, or will he do the creep? I think he'll just do the tiptoe shot. I, I think he'll do it, he'll do it after the Fury as well, you know? Oh, right, of course, right, of course, yeah. right. The, the, there's a few places for some box headshots in this run for sure. All right, we're going to knock this guard down, we're going to shoot a tree. That'll make the guard go on his radio, and then we'll just roll past him. It's really difficult and precise to do that roll. If you're too short, if you're too late, you'll get seen. Yep. But yeah, super clean room. This next part's the end. It's not the end of the run. It's a boss called the end. There's also a boss called the boss, but that's not this boss. That boss is at the end. <laughs> I'll let you explain the end fight. <laughs> All right, so the end fight, he's going to start off. Um, I'll let the fight start, actually. Kodak got to skip. He should start off with three headshots, or at least he's going to try to go for three headshots here. Uh, like Apache was saying earlier, we, we keep the arrow in because it um, it's a better positioning for the end. It's a better positioning for the headshots. Okay, you can see he did get the shots. The end saying something. All right, so this, this setup right here, um, if I remember it correctly, he's going to do some punches. I think seven, six punches, uh, punch, punch, PPKs. I'm sorry, punch, punch, kicks. This is to give the end time to move around, I believe. Um, and then he's going to throw a smoke right after. This is all just some magic to basically make the end spawn <laughs> opposite from us. He's going to fire three shots. And now the end has magically teleported. And you should be able to see his scope glint. He's going to throw a stun. And he's going to run up on him. He's going to do some punches. Or he's gonna start with the six spray. He's gonna hold him up. Yeah, I didn't nice. think he would hold. I didn't. I wasn't sure he was just gonna hold up there, but it seems to be working fine. It's and at this point, it's pretty much just the old strat where you do the six spray smokes. Uh, you're pretty much keeping the end held in his position, uh, doing as much stun damage as you can. Eventually, he will get up though, um, and you wanna you kind of wanna have as low uh, stamina damage as much as possible. This right here, Snake can cough here, um, or not actually. I think he readied the cigar gas spray to prevent him from doing that. Oh, okay, very nice. Oh, he's going for a super risky way of doing this. Oh, he misses, he, he let go of R1. Now he will go to a position in this room, you can find him, but Raichu's stamina is really low here. If Raichu takes a shot from the end, I think he's going back to the lab. Yeah. So he needs yeah. to think like, you know, he can call the radio, sig in uh, 147.878 well, and he'll get well, stamina back. The end should be like right next to him. I, right, it's kind of hard to point. I'm pointing at the screen, but he sh I think he's like right over there. Yeah, 
He can be that... in one of a few positions. Oh, he's found him. Very nice. clean. That was so scary. Nice. Oh, my God. If he'd have been hit by the end there, he was going all the way back to the lab. I was so nervous there. All right, nice. He made it out. Uh, for beating the end non lethally, your reward is the Mosin Nagants, which is pretty much the answer to why don't you guys kill the end early? Well, it's because we want this. We want this sniper rifle, especially if you're going, it's a non lethal sniper rifle. If you're going for Foxhound rank, uh, this thing is a beauty against the Fury. Uh, it's primarily what we use, unless you're doing some crazy multi -seg segment strats, but. I mean, yeah, it's it's hella good versus the Fury. It's great versus the boss. Right. If you do non-lethal Vulcan, because you want like the Cold War, it's good against him too. Uh, we tend to do lethal strats in the speed run, but like his is a great weapon. Hey guys, and if I, you're wondering I, why he doesn't, oh sorry, Tony, you go, man, you go. No, I was gonna say I know that this is a, a pretty memorable scene, but um, you got time for a quick uh, sub? I Tony, to I've down. always got time for you, mate. <laughs> Appreciate that. All right, so we have a new sub from. Oh, sorry if I butchered this wrong, but Nemiasp MT. Um, thank you for that. Sub, uh, subscribe. Appreciate that for two months. And uh, again, if uh, anybody has donations, bits, subs, um, they'll all benefit toward underwater smoking. Um, I'll leave it back to you guys. Thanks, Tony. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm sorry, it's Snow, you go, mate. Uh, just shout out to the community. Uh, it, it's amazing, you know, what Limeade and, and what the community has done. Um, really, you know, just really thanks a lot. And and I'm glad to be a part of it. Um, I'm already thinking about <laughs> Limeade 4.0. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I love these events. And, and every time I, I sit here and I watch these speedrun events, it, it just makes me want to get back into speedrunning and just, you know, oh, man, I'm going to go for this and that. Um, but yeah, no, watching Raichu here is definitely triggering that Euro itch, um, which might be the best category for MGS3, I think. It's pretty, it's pretty great. It's I, pretty great. It's pretty um, sick, man. No, nothing, like, makes me in the mood to do Euro 3 runs than watching someone else play yeah. Euro 3. I'm like, oh, God, that's so sick. Oh, look at the way they kill the end. <laughs> like, it's, it, it gets me so excited, man definitely i was actually thinking like oh man when he took that arrow out i was like oh he just screwed the end he's gonna do the old strat i didn't know you could still get him if you took the arrow out so that's something i learned right there yeah yeah absolutely i mean it, it's it's fine either way it's just because of the prone position it's easier to see his head and do like repeated headshots because of the way he flinches when right. you hit him but like either way either way is fine so here we are in mountains um Raichu's going to equip the box, uh, which seems kind of counterintuitive, but it's going to help with these slopes, of course. And then it's just going to be a series of uh, Cirque du Soleil performance. He's going to be rolling, rolling, rolling. So very precise movement here as well. Guard to your left, guard to your right. Guards down further away. You really got to be careful with your rolls here. Otherwise, we'll get caught. Animals helps, of course. Yeah, not only do you have that to contend with, but your stomach is about to growl, and it will growl just as you get to that final guard. So your timing has to be impeccable. In Mountain 2, you can just hold down the shoot button at the start of the room and it will instantly headshot a guard that's uh, way off screen. But now we're going to... I'm not See, I don't know what strat he's going to do. There's quite a few ways you can do Mountain 2. And there's some really dangerous things you can go for. Oh my god, he's going for the box headshot. This is, this is really tough. Nice. So box headshot, you have to roll up this mountainside. He's going to equip the M1911. And what he's going to do, he's going to use the M1911 as like a stun. So he's going to walk towards this guard shooting the M1911 just to stun him and prevent uh, the guard from seeing him. And then he's going to hit him and roll off the edge, which doesn't count as a kill. Um, so that's right. an in intensely fast way of doing this room. And it's, it's really difficult to do as well. Cigar gas spray to get through that guard nice and quick. The whole reason this strat will work is because we take out every guard uh, in the room. If you don't take out every guard, it doesn't work. Oh my god, this is perfect. He's got two guards walking towards, hits him with both barrels. <laughs> We've got one guard left for the end of the room. Right, just going to go and get the RPG. So we'll need that for later. If you get it early, you don't have to menu it later in the game. Saves the menu. He's just going to chuck a stun grenade over this uh, over this hut. Hopefully take out the last guard. He is blinded as well, so he may not... Ooh, he he, oh, he risked it. He, he couldn't have known whether the guard was down or not. And right. he was flashed, but he still went for it. Right. All right, man's three, bar none, scariest room in the game. Caution strat, you think? 
just don't know how what he's gonna do at this point. Yeah, yeah it looks like caution strat. Man, so look at that. Yeah, go ahead. So Caution Strat makes all the different guards in the room do different things. They all hear that gunshot and run off to different places. We've got the guard at the top on his radio, and what we're trying to do is just get over this hillside before he finishes his call and turns around. Movement there was so clean. So, so clean, because that guard was on, still on his radio when Raichu had got to the end. Very yeah, and, difficult and to do. The experience really shows he, he's doing these incredibly difficult rooms extremely cleanly. Just just breezing through them. Uh, props to Raichu. Uh, don't don't let at the beginning there, you know. Screw that, screw that room, screw both of. I mean, I mean, he got through the first one fine, but yeah. Uh, yeah, Raichu is a beast. Most in the gun equipped for the Fury coming up. Uh, but yeah, that was mountains. Um, I mean, it's not over yet. Technically, you still have to get down to the Fury, but chances are you're not gonna get caught here. It's, it's very relaxing compared to going up the mountain. Right. Going down it like feels like a real breeze. Right. You're gonna do a cool little jump on this. Uh, I don't know what you would call that, but. <laughs> like a ledge. This game's like a platformer in a way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say though, Mountains 2, that strat where you where you uh, shoot the guard uh, a couple times and roll into him, like is one of the cooler strats I've seen. It's so dangerous because if your angle's wrong, you'll hit the guard's radio and then mm. the guard will just instantly see you. Yep. So it's, it's kind of a scary one to go for, especially in a marathon. But we said at the start, right? She's going to go for crazy stuff. Like that's that's how he plays. You know, it's it's an all or nothing kind of play style. Um, but yeah, we got the Fury. Fury is the hardest boss in the game. At the start of the fight, you can land in one of three spots. Right? She's going to use a camera manipulation to put him into a favorable uh. spot. It works like, you know, 90% of the time. Looks like it's worked <laughs> here today. Oh, he gets the worst spot. It didn't work. The problem with this spot is it's difficult to distinguish in your headphones that um, south spot from the southwest spot. Right. And the south is by far the worst. Uh, but he's got the best position now. So he's just going to try and essentially loop uh, the Fury by knocking him down three times with the Mose and the gun. Waiting for him to stand up and fire. Oh, that, that was so weird. Like, he was being shot at, but he took um, iframes from the fire on the ground so he didn't get hit by the spray. Now this is kind of like you resign to more of a casual fight when this happens. The Fury's going to be somewhere in the north of the building, um, and you'll kind of just have to hunt him down or do these long-range shots. You do have a sniper rifle, um, as Major says, so always remember to use it as a sniper rifle. You can you do have like two times zoom on there as well. But three shots will knock the Fury down. He'll stand up. He can boost. He can um, fly around the level. He can stand still and try and fire at you. And just to make an obvious thing obvious, that fire is deadly. If you, uh, if, if Snake touched that fire, he, he gets on fire, correct? Yeah, yes, you, you catch fire and fire has the highest DPS. It's the most damaging thing in this whole game. You, you even have to be careful of it on the lower difficulties. Oh, and when the, when, when the Fury goes up into the air like that, he's completely invincible. And when he's firing, he's completely invincible as well. He almost had the finish there, uh, but the Fury flew off. Oh my god, he got he got nipped. The fire came through the wall and like nipped him. Um, that's what that's generally why you see it in the box pushing against the wall because it's less likely to happen. So unfortunate. But yeah, truly the the tough the toughest fight in the whole game. By yeah. by far the hardest boss fight. And he's just resetting it. Like, I know that feeling. I'm just saying, you know what? Just go again. I'll just do the fight from the start where, right. you know, I can limit the amount of variables that happen. It really, tough, I mean, tough fight. we can, you know, in ways mitigate the RNG, I guess, but it's still, it's still just random. It's still just up to him where he wants to go. Yeah, this is a, this is a beast of a fight. You remember when we did the, uh, the MGS3 races back in the day? Uh, commentators would just get to this point and they'd be like, oh, okay, this is where the race actually begins because who knows what's <laughs> going to happen with the Fury. But yeah, this is the favorable position. But these quick reloads that he does, they have to be perfect as well because if you're not fast enough with your next shot, you're stood in the front of the Fury in a vulnerable place. So you can sometimes shoot once and then you end up shooting between the legs. He tried to uh, make him do the fire again to keep him stunned, but he should be fine now. He should be yeah. should be completely stood still. Yeah, nice that's finish. how the fight should look. And when you see the fight go like that, you think, oh my god, it's so easy. But the, the Fury <laughs> just doesn't always give you that option. Yeah. 
coming up is Grozny Grad. Uh, we got to uh, infiltrate the building. Um, this little area right here isn't too isn't too dangerous or anything like that. You kind of want to hug the container that he's going to pass by, I think, to avoid a guard to your left. Uh, and then we're going to see another cool box headshot. Um, and then we have to, and once we enter the base, we're going to go ahead and kidnap Rykov, grab his uniform. He does kind of a weird strat there. He lets the guard see him for a second to put him into a more favorable favorable position for the box head chart. He's the only person I see do it like that. But it's just a it's a very clinical way of doing the doing the doing the room. This right here is cool. Uh, as long as you hold your shoot button, you'll just auto aim onto this guy, get on your tiptoes, and knock this guy out. And then this beauty of a of a glitch, I guess you would call it exploit, where I, I guess guards take precedence over knocked out buddies over the box. So. If they see a friend that's knocked out and you're in a box, you're going to go for the friend that's knocked out. I don't know how it works, but <laughs> it's magic. Right. right, she's going to go for an insane multi-segment strategy here. This is really difficult to pull off, and it's not recommended that you do this in single segment runs because of this. It's very, very tough to pull this off. This is not something we even tell people to go for in, in normal runs. If you get it, it's very quick, but it also it looks so cool as well. This is something that um he very much uh, popularized doing the hardest bit is that second when you get out the box and you have to hit this guard in the chest and then get out of his view i think he, he may give us another an, another couple of looks at this yeah just because it's it's worth seeing when it when it's done it, it looks so cool here we go there we this, go it's not over yet there's still so much more to do with this strat Damn, it's so tough to pull this off. He's basically making Rykov run around the room where he wants him by like firing at walls and things like that. <laughs> but you can never let them have sight of you for like a second, otherwise it's over. Right. Tough, tough strap to pull off. I want to see it now. Like I, I, <laughs> I, I want to see it done now. I've hyped it up. <laughs> it looks like he shoots Rykov on the bridge, then the guy down there, and then Rykov enters the room. Does he, he shoots Rykov again, and then, uh, oh, okay, I think I know. And then Rykov runs to a spot, he grabs him, and then takes him to the lockers. Is that pretty much? Yeah, so he's going to make him, like, run towards the lockers rather than dragging him there, and then he'll see QC slam ah. him into the place. But, like, it, there cannot be a step wrong. If you want to pull this off, there, like, cannot be a step wrong. What? This is looking good. This is the hardest bit. You have to knock him through a room like that. Here we go. He's go he's got it. He should have this. Oh my god, he got it. Beautiful. Let's go, Raichu. Look how hard that was to pull off. Like, you know, you're gonna make mistakes when you go for strats like that. But I've seen him get that first time in runs. It's very, very fast. That skips yeah. the whole like dragon Rykov around. The, the, thank you for showing that to us. I know I know it took a couple of attempts, Raichu, but we, we appreciate seeing that today, mate. Definitely, that was very nice. Appreciate it. This uh, is this is what I was talking about. We have like so many people play the game so differently, and like you, you you can watch different runners of this game and just have a blast with all the different things that they do and that they go for. And people just have their own flair, and that's that's really exciting to me. I, I absolutely love speedruns of this game. <laughs> is he gonna? <laughs> He's gonna do an airsco glide. <laughs> He's gonna get a slow one here. There we go. <laughs> nice. Uh, that was a glitch found by Appel. I think only in like 20... I, I want to say 2020. It, it's relatively new, but we didn't know about that for a long time. It can only be done on HD Collection. It doesn't work on PlayStation 2, but... And it's only useful there as well, which is a shame, because we when it was first found, we were all thinking that we were just going to be like box gliding all around the game. Right. <laughs> But it only works on uh, rooms where the like doors are, where the where the wall is split in half. Okay, I was expecting him to get caught because I've never actually seen it be done there. I'm like I said, I'm missing out on my MG3 strats. But I thought the cards would trigger for a second, but and he was just messing around. There, there okay. is a chance that you bump the guard and you don't get the cutscene. That can happen, but generally now you'll see runners do it in in like both rooms. Nice. Uh, so some more downtime here. Snake's getting tortured. Um, coming up is the cell. Um, and a cool strat there where we basically... Um, 
Oh, I don't really want to spoil it now that I think about it. I feel like I'm talking too far ahead. Uh, it's, all, case, it's all good. Just chill on it, man. It's all good. We're yeah, being tortured. I, I hope you guys have, are enjoying the run so far. Um, trying to think of kind of like what you were saying earlier in, in my mind, like a, a graph of like different runners, like this guy saved time here, but then the same guy lost time there, but then he saved time there, like the various strats and stuff like games. Games are very. Yeah, this game is very modular, very different. It makes me really want to get back into it. But uh in any case yeah mgs3 is a great game to run if anyone's interested in learning it uh hop on over to the discord man we have plenty of people willing to teach and willing to learn um what would you say for for a person to, to start running this game what difficulty would you recommend apache oh very easy all the way i i learned on very easy i had, I had a blast playing that it really teaches you the mechanics of the game uh, and how to do it and you know everything that's going on in the run teach you a lot of advanced strategy skills like quick reloading um how the boss cycles work just where just general like where you're actually supposed to go and then yeah. you can move up to euro pretty nicely like european extreme in this game is a blast but without that like core learning on how to like control snake and how to control the weapons and how guards work um it, it, it becomes so much easier to learn how to run euro if you understand how to run very easy first right and i would even say if you're well, actually, no, I'd say just go straight to Euro. I was going to recommend, like, normal and such, but I think Euro, Euro is just such a kick-ass difficulty. People should just get into it ASAP after V, of course, which I agree yeah. with that sentiment. Yeah, just get in the mud with it and give it a go. It's, it's super fun. It's not as it's not as difficult to, to start doing runs as people think. Like, it's a hard game at top level, sure, but, mm -hmm. you know, I believe in you. This is a weird strat. We're going to see him... Oh, I thought we were going to see him open the cell then. Mm. I was so ready for that. I thought we were going to see him puke. I guess not. Oh, he's going to make him turn around. He's there we go. He's going to make him turn around, and then he's going to open the cell with the codec. 144.85. So this is something you don't normally see. This is a fun strat. So you can actually get out the cell in three different ways. Fake death pill, throwing up, and... Uh, he forgot. I think he forgot he needed the smoke grenades. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad he realized before he got out the room because if you get out the room, it's a lot harder to get back in and get the smokes. <laughs> right. The benefit here is um, he won't have to do his codec again because it'll already be set to the right no the right number. So we're gonna have to go out, kick the kick the hell out of Johnny. We'll normally do like punch punch, a few swipes with the uh Oh, oh. we just got him. <laughs> oh, this is nerve wracking, man. But yeah, we shake down Johnny, we get the smoke grenades. They're super useful for escaping prison. Very cool strap from right to there. That was very cool. I'm going to see a, a frame perfect trick where you throw the item, equip the smoke grenades, and then you want to cook them just as you're getting past this guard. Very nice. Now, I don't think we mentioned it, but that uh, that cooking grenade to have silent feet, that's uh, HD edition exclusive or no? I want to say no. I'm not. Okay. I'm not sure, you know. I, I I don't think it is. I think it works on all versions, but I could I could be wrong. I'm not that I'm not a big runner of the PS2 versions. Gotcha. But I feel yeah. like I've seen Marta do it. Yeah, no, it, it no. I'm pretty sure it's all versions. But it, otherwise, it, in other words, it's a very regardless of that, it's a very neat trick. Some very yeah, cool. Yeah, super useful. Uh, not very cool. Uh, not some, but a smoke uh, throw there to. What, distract these guards and they can't see you another one there for the dog you can do like an animation cancel after you throw the grenade if you unequip uh you'll kind of cancel the animation the full animation and instead you can start running again sooner yeah canceling end lag is uh huge in metal gear games super yeah. underrated like we do it in quite a few of the games and it's like a fighting game technique right it's yeah, like canceling yeah. lag So here we are in the sewers. Um, we're gonna take a, a huge drop here. It doesn't really matter. Snake can take it. Uh, you can you can equip the sig here, uh, the cigar, and just drain your health if you wanted to for RTA. But um, as for those that don't know, coming up to sorrow fight and IGT does not matter. So unless you're purely going for RTA, 
you know, feel free to just run through here. Don't worry about equipping the cigar or anything like that. And what we have here is a series of vents, which I think you can do the vent glitch here too. I don't think it's beneficial, but... You just get stuck in a wall if you do it. <laughs> if you do the vent glitch, you get stuck between the wall. Nice. Because it just puts you like on top of the vent. I, I experimented with this room trying to find like a way of um, like glitching through these walls or something, but... Oh, very smart of Raichu to turn completely around before going through the <laughs> vent. If you go for a vent backwards, Snake's stand-up animation is slower because mm. he does a special animation to prevent his head from hitting the, the roof of the ledge, like like you would if you were crawling out from under a table yourself. Right. And it's it's slower backwards than it is forwards. I, I love how they just thought of things like that. Like, yeah. you know, they, they added an animation for crawling out of a vent backwards. And that was the sewers. Hardest room in the game. Huge no, it, boss it, fight right here. <laughs> uh, we're going to go underwater. And that's it. But as Snow was saying, none of the time during the sorrow counts for the in-game timer. So even if you walked in and pick up the camo, it wouldn't affect your score, which is what we use to determine who had the fastest speedrun. Some nice downtime here from the sewers through this boss. Um, uh, and this area coming up, usually this area coming up would be populated with Ocelot unit soldiers, um, but that's only if you kept the transmitter inside you. Um, but if you notice during the cell, Raichu takes it out um, because, other, because we just don't, we wouldn't want it. If we have the chance to not deal with, oh, wait, he kept it in? Yeah, he just... leave, this is this is something he does. This is oh. his uh, Ocelot unit strat, um, mushroom strat that he does. Um, yeah, he's kind of kind of known for this one. Well, this is exciting. Let's let's go. This is not something you typically see. Get straight past that first guard with a roll after luring him over with a knock. This is a very long room as well. Like it's worth worth mentioning. This is a super long room. And you just have multiple guards. Uh, uh, I think there's a guy above you. There's guys on your level. Just multiple eyes on you that can easily alert you. Okay, grenade trick to run right behind that guy, roll over him. Nice. How's he gonna deal with this guy? Another grenade trick. Okay. Just straight not past bad. him. Yeah. Straight past him. Awesome stuff. Great to see it. Again, not some absolutely not something <laughs> you typically see because we just removed the transmitter because it's faster to get through that room without the ocelot unit. There. It only takes like a yeah. second to remove the transmitter. But yeah. Appreciate the the uh the floor showing off the uh, the cool strats for sure. Uh, this is probably like the longest string of cutscenes in the game right here. And yeah, it's just a huge, it's a huge load. It's like 23 seconds. Yeah. And this is even with, you know, as he's playing on PS3, even with low, tr this is outside of low trick. So low trick can't even affect that load. Right. Yeah. The only thing you can do on a PS3 to make it shorter is during multi segment runs where you load trick like every room. Right. Right. That's why like multi-segment runs on PS3 can still be faster than even runs on the uh, Xbox series. Mm. Getting our box here, most important box in the whole run. Uh, this will allow us to teleport into straight into the weapons lab. Save a bunch of time. He's going to equip life med as well just for safety. I would as well. You don't want to die during the bike chase. Definitely. Typically, modern runners will like, uh, uh, equip the OS cam here during that menu just to ensure that they don't uh, lose Fox Sound during a bike chase, but you don't need to. And the old school runners were for a long time doing it without OS camo, uh, but many of them obviously <laughs> losing Fox Sound during the bike chase. It, do it does happen. Right. Here we're going to see that earlier trick with the box. Uh, he's going to headshot this guard. He first distracted that guard with the box, headshotted this one, and then he's home free to just run straight to the truck which is all the way uh, to the north, just waiting for us. But yeah, uh, as Apache said, this is the most important box. Make sure when you do this run, make sure you equip the C box at B and nothing else. Because <laughs> otherwise you're not gonna go where you need to go. And boom, there he is in the main wing. Now, I really hope he does the wall shot. I'm assuming he will, because to me, it, it's just one of the greatest strats ever. 
or we're, yeah we're I, as long as you shoot in that direction i guess but this one cool trick will get rid of all the guards in your area all right it's yes. not maybe not getting rid of them but getting them out of the way for sure we still have to navigate around these maintenance guys but as long as we equip the box we're fine he's pretty close there um but hey you're kind of guarded by the by the big fuel tank you can move uh slightly like as that codex ending uh, which is kind of why you saw Raichu moving there ahead of time almost and we're just planting c3 on these fuel tanks and boom guards kind of start to pile in uh you, you couldn't see it but they were near the shagoha they cart they start kind of like running in from wherever they went to And the first, this, the, ahead, first yep. the first the first fight is cool um we're gonna see lethal strategies we'll use the svd to kill him because he doesn't actually die here he doesn't count as a kill so you can do this in foxhound runs um and it's a lot faster to kill him with the svd than the mosin nagant i'm not sure what happened there he didn't push him forward but cool no no we're fine we're fine oh i forgot to equip the svd <laughs> mistakes were made Yeah, Volgan takes uh, very little. You kind of want to, when you throw him down, you want to shoot that first shot, but then you kind of want to give him a second, right? You don't want to be too quick on that first shot or something like that when you throw him down. Especially yeah, for, too this, quick. for this phase, you definitely want to take some shots as well. Nice. Clean phase two. And now we've got, you know, just a, a long section, the bike chase. Um, you're pretty much pulling guard duty. You got to take out anyone in your way. Uh, RPG for the Shagohod. And then I'm, I'm guessing you still do stuns for the guards that are in your way because, of course, there's going to be guards in your way. So you can do some chip damage here if you hit like that rectangular. Uh, you probably couldn't see it there, but there's like a rectangular tan spot uh, on the Shagohod's front. If you hit that spot, you'll do some chip damage. Um, and these stuns, uh, thankfully, you have infinite ammo as well. So you're free to kind of just go go ham. Um, as Apache was saying earlier, some guys would equip Oscam, which negates damage by 33%, 25%. Yeah, 33. Um, um, which is useful, you know, because if, if maybe your aim, if maybe your stun throws aren't that good, or there's even some RPG guys we'll see during the spike chase, and, and they can really mess you up. So Oscam is definitely useful. Yeah, it gives you a huge buffer to make mistakes. And for those that don't know, um, you get Oscam either by playing on a new game plus file or uh, choosing I like MGS3 uh, when you start a new game. You get Oscam with a bunch of different camos and face paints. Yeah, if you're playing on new game plus, the best camo to use is the Cold War camo because you can look at the floor for the entire bike chase on the PS3. <laughs> which saves a bunch of frames and is like it's like 20 plus seconds faster yeah this room uh, on very easy looks uh, this entire section bike chase looks very different um because you're pretty much just especially on ps3 you're just looking at the sky the floor um i think for the like the hovercraft room i think subsistence camera like face down is like the fastest i you know it's been a while since i've seen that major's video on that all that stuff but yeah, you, you definitely save time. On Xbox, we don't have to worry about that because it's lag-free. Um, but yeah, very detrimental on PS3 if you're not uh, doing any lag-reducing stuff on a lower difficulty. Yeah, you'll see him do it where, you know, wherever possible in this run. He won't be too worried about it just because. It's marathon run, it's fine. He probably rather showed the, like, what's going on during the bike chase. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, the so bike up chase. to now, the, the bike chase has been an auto-scroller, but in this next room, we actually have to take out the guards to progress. So it's really important that the, the next lot of stun grenades are all, are all done correctly. The guards are always in the same positions, and then there's additional guards that are equipped with rocket launchers, which are you know, incredibly damaging if they hit us. So you'll see the first rocket guard appear on the roof now. Uh, Raichu will just be ready for him, he'll throw a stun grenade as he ever begins to drive. That, that one has like a 50% chance of hitting you, but the rest of the rocket guards are like 100% chance to hit you. So, you gotta be careful of them. We wanna take out all these guards to reduce the amount of damage that we're taking. If you don't take out all of those guards there, Eva will just park here until, he, until you've taken them out. 
Right. And they will, you know, they can run kind of slowly. They do that little hunched up run towards you. So you definitely want to get get rid of them all as fast as you can. For sure. And Eva will confirm when you hit the rocket guard as well. So that is a bonus. And you can just see the damage Raichu's taken. If you take a look at Snake's health bar. Um, yeah, just, just getting There's shot one, at. One rocket guard for the end of the room. He's the most important. He's switching to life med because he knows he's taking that. Yeah, yep. That's the importance uh, of them. Yeah, you got to take out those rocket guards. The runway itself isn't really too scary. Um, you don't have to deal with any RPG guys anymore, thank God. So all we have to deal with are these guys on these bikes. Um, you can get rid of the driver or you can get rid of the sidecar guy. Um, if you get rid of the sidecar guy, I believe like no one, no additional troops will spawn. But I think the drivers can shoot you as well. So Raichu is going to take care of the drivers, which in turn will cause them to crash, obviously. And yeah, die. But this bit right here is, is an auto scroller. You cannot uh, lose time here unless you die, of course. Uh, we're just going through the motions. If you're doing a Keratan run, a Keratan uh, does pop up here as well. So keep your eyes peeled. I think it's like on a sign. Uh, yeah, it's on it's on one of the little runway signs on the, on the right. And that one, I'm pretty sure, caused a lot of people to get upset when they're like, <laughs> they're like, "Where's the Keratan I missed?" <laughs> But yeah, kind of a troll move on my part, but hey, it is a level, so. You use rockets to hit them, it's way easier. Ah, there you go, there you go. Nice. Second uh, phase of the runway coming up. We're going to do some more chip damage to the Shagohod. Um, and, and I believe there's a threshold. There's like a max amount of uh, damage you can do here. I think it's 40%. Hmm. But it's definitely uh, helps a lot. Try and get as much damage as you can during this part. Because we are going to be taking on this beast. There's no doubt about it. So yeah, right there, kind of in that middle section there is where you want to aim. Something about if you shoot too fast or if you shoot his uh, treads, he'll, he'll kind of slow down or stop. I'm not exactly sure which one's correct, but... Uh, the Shagohod can kind of back off at times, and that's what you don't want because uh, he'll be too far away for you to hit. You can still kind of hit him, but you definitely want to keep him high, like how Raichu has him now, just kind of next to you. Um, and it seems like the, the pace Raichu's shooting at, up. Oh, see, this is where the Shagohod's kind of going to back off. Although the damage uh, Raichu's done here to the Shagohod is, is, is great. It, it's a good amount of damage right here. And this section is, this section flies by right here. So try to get in as much as you can. Yeah, he's doing really, he's done really good damage there. Yeah. I planted four C3 charges. So right here, the bridge, uh, Shago Hot's coming. We got this bridge here. We got to blow up, um, get rid of the three of the four charges and you can, you know, you can kind of. I guess, like, don't don't have that hanging one be the last one, right? You kind of want to, uh, people usually go for this charge to be the last one. Although, I guess, whatever you're comfortable with, right? But, yeah. Make sure you listen for Eva. It's here. Shoot it. And boom. You can get a game over here. It's, it's not given to you, so. So, starting off the Shago Hot fight, we're going to go for the loop. Uh, you have to aim for a specific part. I think right there. Oh, perfect. Open fire. Shagohot's going to stay in his spot. Raichu's going to shoot the back plate here, and then he's going to shoot the tread again. Or he's going to wait a oh, second. Oh, he missed it there. He got the guards. Uh, almost, man. That was that was uh, like a really clean setup at the start, but just lost That's... it towards the end there. He might still be able to get the treads again. Yeah, that, that opening was clean as, as as a whistle. That was a great opening there. Exactly what you want, what you want for this fight. But this fight, you know, up until pretty much the, the loop was popularized, was was kind of like the Fury, which is where it's just a random fest. It's an RNG fest. You know, you're kind of hoping for the best. You shoot his tread. He might turn this way. He might turn that way. Eva might drive that way. Eva might drive this way. 
And so what the loop pretty much did, and why the reason why the loop is so popular is it, it stabilized Shagohad, stabilized Eva, so uh, you're pretty much, you have a clean shot of the back plate, which is uh, his weak, the Shagohad's weak spot, and you guys are kind of, you're kind of just spam, you're not spamming him with rockets, but you are timing it. You do have to be, yeah, you do have to time it. Uh, but instead of looping around like this, you're kind of just standing there, uh, and you have a perfect view. Um, but yeah, this this is the Shagohot fight, with, and this, once again, this is why the loop is so great. Right? It's not like Raichu is doing bad either. Uh, this is just the fight itself, unfortunately. And now, now that we've defeated the machine, uh, Volgan's gonna come step out on top. And this fight, you do have to shoot him non-lethally if you are going for uh, Foxhound, because this fight will count as a kill if you finish him with the SVD. And you can see it's just a simple, you know, RPG, Mosin, back and forth, uh, going for the headshot on Volgan, shooting the tread. Boom, there you go. Super clean fight. Really yeah. nice phase two. Now we've got more bike chase, so more stun grenades, more Mark 22, Mosin Nagant, whatever right she's going to use, just to get through here as cleanly as possible without taking too much damage. I'm going to go yeah, grab when you water. Wear, when you wear Tiger Stripe, you want to minimize the amount of damage you take in this room because you need everything for the platform guards to get through without using their life med. So you're going to see him taking out the, the guards on the bike as quickly as possible. As they spawn in, he's going to preemptively throw stun grenades towards them. Because you just you just don't want to take any hits. You want to minimize the amount of damage you take before the platform guard section, which is the next room. Absolutely deadly room. So that's the end of the guards for chase one bikes we're going to come to two checkpoints now and the checkpoints are you can take a lot of damage the guards are static so you just want to take them out as quickly as possible so we have a few here there's one in the tower these right here are all, are all armed with ak so the most they can do is like that chip damage it's the next checkpoint uh where you really uh, there's an rpg guy so you want to make sure you take him out absolutely He's just behind the barricade. And yeah, if you if you don't hit him, you're gonna have a really bad time in the next room. Like the RPG won't kill you, it does a lot of your health, but he got the RPG, like he just got the RPG guard. That's the only thing that matters. Yeah, yeah. But this is the scariest room of bike chase just because there's three platform guards and one of them can like park above you and he'll just rain like hellfire down upon you. It's the ones at the sides, they do a fair amount of damage, but you can pretty much always get a shot on them and take them out. Once you take out a platform guard out, they'll, uh, a new one will respawn to a maximum of three. And, and not to mention with the guy that hovers above you, uh, not only is he is he doing damage, but now you're losing frames because his light causes lag. So yeah. if, if you do make it out, you, you've just lost time, unfortunately. It's a very, very tough room, this one. I uh, highly recommend Oscan here um, for just about anyone, newbies or veterans. Yeah, if you're super bothered about like Fox Sound in runs, I, I, I would use Oscan. Otherwise, just use a life med. Mm -hmm. Or unless you're running Tuxedo, <laughs> in which <laughs> case. <laughs> you're sometimes forced to use a life med <laughs> if you're, uh, yeah. It, it's based on the amount of camo that you have. Um, affects how much, how much, how easy it is for the guards to hit you. Mm. So Tiger Strike's pretty good. Uh, you know, Ask Cam isn't great camo, but like you, you get the reduced damage effect. Interestingly, this log is one of the only things in the game that doesn't have like splash damage when you hit it with an RPG. The rocket just disappears, so you can shoot the RPG at that log when you're right next to it. Whereas normally, if you shoot an RPG at a wall, there'll be like splash damage on you. 
Can, can you destroy that log uh, with only the RPG? No, or... you can do it with like anything. Okay, nice. Just needs enough I, I, shots, I guess. Yeah, I typically use the SVD, but you can you can use anything. Yeah, uh, I, w I wouldn't recommend this to get gas spray, but like, yeah, you can pretty much <laughs> use any gun. <laughs> so final part of the bike chase here, uh, just more uh, infinitely spawning guards. Uh, you can use, yeah. you know you, you have an uh, entire arsenal at your disposal. Use whatever you'd like, really. Just get through it. It's home stretch. You always feel good when you're in this room, unless you're on like one HP. You always feel like pretty good when you get into this room. Like it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. MGS three. Like I've heard it before. It's very front loaded. Um, mm. Not not to not to diminish the end. Uh, not the not the boss fight. Uh, like the end of the game. The end of the game's still tough. You know, we still uh, the Eve escort can. I don't know. Something could happen. You never know. But uh. It challenges it, it, different skills in the late game because it's yeah. more about like consistent aim and weapon skill like in the later half whereas the first half's like kind of like movement right um, and, and strat memorization and mm. freaking yeah um definitely a front-loaded game uh, the action you know right from the get-go you, you're in there so if you're if you're i know we've had a little bit of downtime in this run but if you're into a, into a kind of game that kind of keeps you moving and and the strats really, really challenge you. You gotta take some time to learn them. I, I think MGS3 is a, a great game to step into for those reasons. It's uh, and, and just something about it just seems more hardcore than the other games. I'm sorry, guys, but I had to say it. This, this game's just more hardcore, man. Like, I, we're I, gonna, I think... we're, we're biased. We're gonna say we both run <laughs> this game, Mike. Of course, we're gonna say that. Like I've tried MGS2 Euro and all that, it just it just I don't know. But uh, this first MGS3 thing... is the best. You heard it first, folks. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna get stuck in a menu here, and what you'll see Raichu do is feed Eva before curing her. And this is a strat that he actually discovered. Um, he's gonna clean up his menus just because they're in awkward places as well. Like you wouldn't normally do this, but because he entered the SVD later. Um, he just wants to clean up his menu so it's perfect for the boss fight. But Raichu actually discovered that feeding Eva first is possible before you cure her, and it saves a menu. So on PlayStation 3, it saves like 9 seconds. So shout out Raichu for that one. Good find. Because otherwise you would just uh, continue through this room, and then when would you feed her? Just before you... We used to feed her like at the start of the last room of guards, I think. It's uh -huh. been so long since I fed her, actually. <laughs> like without being in that menu but yeah feeding her is is, is important because she will uh, get hungry and stop moving and she'll just become a nuisance so keep her fed yeah if she gets down to a quarter of stamina she won't move she'll just sit still which is annoying all right so so million dollar question man i i, I need to know is left side tree actually faster no, it's not. Oh. It's definitely not. No, giving her like a perfect line is just better, but left side tree is ridiculous. Because the way she moves at left side tree as well, is it's just like, it's just really bad movement. It's really slow. Mm. But still, I got to go for it. When I say really slow, <laughs> I'm talking about like one or two seconds, but. Right. But yeah, all we're doing here is we're just uh, moving. Uh, we're moving away from her because if you get too close, she will stop. And then you'll have to hit a triangle again or Y, whatever, to tell her to, you know, wave at her, make her follow you again. But, uh, you yeah. know, a lot of people are like, oh, I hate the escort sections. I don't like the Emma section. I don't like the Eva section. It's like the, the Eva section is so chill. It's two yeah. rooms. Yeah. Like Emma's way longer. Yeah. And Emma, you can't even use weapons. I mean, you can, but you got to like let go of her. She's not really her own entity in a way. I, well, I definitely prefer this one. When Emma gets caught as well, she just sits on the floor and cries. Eva pulls out the, the Mauser and just starts nailing guards. Yep, yep. So this first guard, uh, Raichu, you can auto-aim on him. It uh, looks like he just missed a headshot. Uh, must have let go of tiptoes too early or something. Two guards. Oh, man, three guards coming to investigate What's that. What's going on here? Is he just going to try to slip by them? Looks like it. Maybe. They'll go back to their path eventually, though, right? 
so it should be as he enters here he's just gonna headshot this guard uh, this guard to snakes left once again with just some auto aim and tiptoes oh, oh okay nice this is pretty much all this room is is just headshotting guards I don't know how he saw him there. That was super weird. And these guards do... I want to say these guards stay down forever. So you don't have to worry about them waking up. Which doesn't really matter in the speedrun because you want to just get through as fast as possible. I, I, I just really don't know. I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to argue. <laughs> if you say that's true, it's true. But I, I didn't know about that. That would be a nice perk. Huh? You don't have to worry about them waking up. Oh, he's going to do the old strat where you shoot the Karatan, I think. Is it, is it uh, in between that one? Yeah, there it is. Not seen that in a long time. That's a yeah. classic. So we still have a couple more guards coming up, just a couple more headshots. Our exit is, is directly opposite us, so all Raichu has to do now is just run to the exit pretty much with Eva. There is like a weird thing here, I, I guess I've, I've seen it before. I, I don't know what causes it, but sometimes Eva will turn back instead of falling down that cliff. Um, and she'll want to go all the way around to where you are. So I don't know what causes that. Um, yeah, it's a weird thing that can sometimes happen. But fortunately, it hasn't happened today. Yeah. This is like three minutes. So Yeah. There was a guard in the grass, but you can kind of just walk past them. Final fight with the boss. It's a cool fight. We'll use the Mosin the Gun and Stun Grenades. Gotta counter the boss at the right time, otherwise she will kick our ass. So we do two headshots, and then we CQC her, and then we throw a grenade up into the air. It's gotta move because we can't CQC from the front at any point during stun. If you try and see QC the boss from the front, she'll always counter. This looks good. Shoot her in the head. If you run away a fixed distance, she'll always charge at you when she stands up. Get ready. Two headshots and slam and that'll be her. Very clean. Yeah. Nice job. It's looking for the Karatan. <laughs> it's going to do your officer salute, I assume. Nice. Very nice. Swaggy. Very swaggy run <laughs> of Metal Gear Solid 3. But of course, technically still not over yet. Uh... We do have to put the boss down for good. And then we still have one more little section. Um, but otherwise, yeah, the sneaking is over and the game's pretty much over. Um, yeah, really nice, uh, really cool strats during this run. Uh, thank you, Raichu, for doing this. Um, thanks, Apache, for being here with me. I appreciate it. Yeah, man, always. I love watching him. I, I'd have just been watching it anyway, so yeah, <laughs> I'm always yeah. watching him just reruns. It was fun commentating Snowy. I think it's been a, a good long while since we've commentated together, so yeah, it's definitely fun. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm excited for Track Mania coming up later, and then MGS1. Bastion will be doing Extreme Glitchless. I'll be commentating both of those. Um, but yeah, no, Limeade 3.0 is, yeah, uh, really enjoying it. Yeah, Limeade, really enjoying it. Really enjoying it. So we always take this this game to uh, the wig, and time is on the final shot in the wig. I'm sure 
Limes knows that very well, being the expert MGS three runner that he is. I don't know if you know, but Limes has ran MGS three once. He has once. Always pick the left gun. The left gun's got the bullet in it, and we can shoot faster than us a lot. Time. That's time, baby. GG. Nice. So. Follow him on Twitch at RaichuMGS. Looks like my luck has finally changed. And follow me on Twitter at Apache Smash. <laughs> <laughs> Over to you, Tony. We always want to follow you at Apache Smash. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, we meet again. Yeah, what a great run. Um, Sean. Ed, I mean, anything, anything uh, y'all want to say? Um, any parting words? I, uh, just thanks for having me, Limeade. Um, once again, thanks for being here with me, Apache. Uh, um, uh, thanks again, Raichu, for doing the run. Um, and I look forward to hopefully coming more runs in the future. Um, I look forward to the rest of Limeade today. And yeah, it was fun doing this. Thanks again, guys. Appreciate it. Yeah, this was dope. This is only the beginning. See, see you all later. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed that MGS3 run because uh, definitely stick around. We got some more exciting runs and um, races today. Uh, so next up, we have MGS4 uh, runner Sir Smuckle and commentating that will be Sergeant Silence. So uh, stick around for that and um, we'll be right back.